race is a day of school where the whole community focuses on uh, individual stories uh, on how they became who they are or just struggles based on their ethnicity or I don't know, yeah, ethnicity and where they came from. Um, Iris is a certain day that we have set that is surrounded about around the topics um, of like race and identity and all these other different things because it's not normally talked about um, in a school setting so we just have a set day to talk about it as well. Iris Summit is a day where we can gain knowledge and depending on wherever we're at in our, our journey I guess of understanding positionality, how race impacts ourselves and how we impact others, that it's a time for us to learn, reflect, an opportunity for growth and learning. Um, it's when we can all get together and just talk about everyday topics in school. I guess, like, it's experience of they learn about culture and then they and we do a potluck and workshops about anything about culture or like different workshops going on and keynotes when everyone joins and someone sings or talk about anything. Um, IRACE is a student-run equity congress that happens every year at Grand Rapids. Every year it changes a little bit. The students that run it are different, the themes are different. Um, but some of the things that always stay the same is that there are usually workshops, there are usually conference workshops, um, hosted by community experts. There's a potluck and usually a keynote for the rest of the year. Um, I don't know them personally, but I know there's a group of students about 10 years ago. Well, this 2020 iRace is going to be the 10th year anniversary, I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they started it after they went to a, um, a workshop and they were like, we want this in our community. I'm pretty sure it was like a group of students, high school students, like a long time ago, way before my time. And it began when three young women, uh, Kara Boot Benson, Anna Miller, and Johanna uh, Keller Flores, wanted to, I think I think Angela Vander Puy, who was the first faculty advisor, encouraged her them to attend the White Privilege Conference um, out of state. And they did so, and it was, um, I think, really transformative for them. So they decided to, they wanted to recreate some kind of a summit or um, collection of workshops here at Great River, and they went ahead and did it, and they were successful their first year. So it was impressive, and I definitely wanted to be involved after I saw the first, I experienced the first one. Yeah. My first I race was my seventh grade year when I first came here. Uh, it was an interesting setting to be in because I had noticed how predominantly white the school was and for them to recognize like race and have a set day for that, it kind of took me like, oh wow, okay, so this is what it's about. Also, the potluck, <laughs> that was some good stuff. Um, yeah. I thought it was a little crazy, you know, because there's so much to it. It's an all-day event in which the entire school participates in. So to plan an event like that is kind of insane. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember I remember just hearing Iris and I was like, what, what the heck is that? And then uh, someone tried to explain it to me and I didn't really understand it. And the day came and then uh, got the workshops. And then I went to like some workshops and observed what uh, people were doing in each workshop and then that kind of helped me understand what IRAs really was. Um, the first time it happened, I had a lot of questions as to why it was happening. Um, it's because it... <laughs> It wasn't the most um, organized event the first time it happened, from my recollection. Um, but since then, I think it's grown a lot and become more meaningful 
students that help organize and take part of it? There were less workshops, but there has always been a keynote. The very first keynote speaker was Dr. Karen McKinney, who is a professor at Bethel. Um, it was something that my friend group was just kind of involved in. It kind of got passed on to us. Um, but I think, especially, I went to public schools until Great River, and I think, especially then, Great River was a very predominantly white school, and it was good for us to like think about race and what that meant for our school, and get um, bring in speakers who had a perspective that was different than our own. Just because I thought it was a time that I could help educate myself and my other students. I think it's important that we learn and stuff. Just that, giving a try and being involved would be beneficial for me. Help know the community. So seventh grade, I did like the speech, right? Yeah. About like race and all this stuff in like Great River. And then uh, fast forward like two years in ninth grade, I was like, I want to take part in actually helping with this process because I feel like it can go much farther than what it's at right now. Yeah. And yeah, so I was like, I want to help with that process. Because it was a new topic, new subject that we learned about. We started iRaceCast in the fall of 2018. Um, I want to say with like maybe 10 to 15 students. Um, and the majority of those students stayed with the entire year. We're in a cast where we did everything from sort of what's the purpose and the guiding principles behind iRace, what's the history of iRace, why do we do this conference, um, and then kind of transitioned into planning and logistics for the iRace 2019 Summit. Yeah. I would say that's important because people need to realize that we are all not we, are, we don't all come from the same places. And each individual has their own struggles and ups and downs. And it's good to learn about different cultures and ethnicities. So better understanding of each other is important. Um, it's important to me because it involves me and involves a lot of the students of color at my school. Well, because it's important to me because I want everyone to learn something and keep growing. Um, I think it's a cool opportunity to learn about different cultures and backgrounds, the people that make up Great Rivers community that we don't really get to see every day or at least express or celebrate it every day. Um, I think it really provides an opportunity for those voices and stories to be shared. Great River is a place that has a lot of intersectionality and equity work in our curriculum. Mm -hmm. But it's not always something that we explicitly talk about, right? It's not something that we are pointing out in a really sort of conscious way. And iRace is really great to be able to, be able to have really concrete conversations with the entire school. This is important to GRS because it is one of the only schools that I know that has a event that's equity focused and student run. So this is not an event that is done by the adults of the school. It's very much dictated by how students expect equity to be seen at Great River. I guess like it's important for me because like the school is not really diverse enough. Yeah. So I guess like to know more about cultural race and identity. I guess it's like a good experience for students to learn about it. It's important to just take in different perspectives other than your own and I think you know Great River is still a very white school and I think we try to provide that um, I don't know other perspective that not everyone's getting and I also just think like there's certain things that people don't have to think about um, if they are in a white body that I didn't have to think about a lot and I think um, getting used to that at a younger age is better than um, having to kind of reconcile that as an adult. As an educational institution, I want to make sure that when students leave, when they get a GRS diploma, that they have at least a beginning, a seed of understanding of 
where their positionality is at in terms of their race, their privilege, how they are impacted by the construction of race in the United States, and how their um, racial demographic and um, privilege and positionality impacts others, intentional or unintentionally. My personal educational philosophy definitely is bent toward peacemaking, and that is why um, this Montessori school has become central to my life. I found this school just in my second year of teaching and um, didn't really have a lot of exposure to Montessori education before that, um, but as soon as I started reading her books, and especially the volume um, uh, Peace and Education, realizing that her vision, Montessori's end game, is that any student who is normalized and treated with dignity and kindness and as a whole human being will naturally become a peacemaker and an activist in society. And so for me, the, the Montessori tenet of peacemaking is central to what I believe to be important about education and to this school. And so Iris is part of that puzzle. That's it. Oh my gosh, well there's 10 years of student organizers who have leadership experience because of iRace. Um, there's 10 years of student organizers who got to put it on their college applications, on their resumes, um, that they helped organize the equity true. conference. Um, there's 10 years of students, just student body students, um, who, whether they know it or not, were part of a large scale experiment in student created programming. Um, and I can't even imagine all of the impacts that happened because of workshops that people went to, um, or all of the connections that were made, or all of the different lessons that were learned. We've had about 20 workshops for each iRace, so 10 times, that's 200 workshops, right? That's like an incredible amount of information that has been accessible to people just by going to school. Planning an event. You know, how to reach out to people, um, how to work with people, how to compromise with people. Yeah, just working with people in general. Um, I think if you think about iRace over a span of this many years that you've been at Great River, I think it could hold some sort of significance. But when you're, dur like, I feel like during that day, you're going through all these workshops and it's just like, it's not seen. It's not seen as how important it should be, um, because I race could be seen as one of the greatest things at Great River, but I feel like we don't hold it to the standard it could be at. Yeah. And the importance of talking about such things as race and identity and individuality is very important. Just that there are more than, or there's more than one story out there for everything, and that always just to remember that idea that there might be more going on in a story or a culture than what might meet the eye. Just having people going into workshops and listening to people's stories kind of gives them the understanding of, I don't know, just how much one person can go through, like, uh, like how much uh, can go through it, yet still they can achieve their goals and also it helps students that are not of minority groups or that are actually white to understand that people that aren't white have difficulties within our society. It's good to learn about them. The experience of Iris is different for everyone and so over the years I've heard a wide range of reactions, responses. Um, I've heard a lot of inspirational, I guess, uh, outside speakers, but also inspirational reflections from our own student body. Um, some some students are, you know, immediately inspired and connect to the idea and the mission of Iris. Some are immediately engaged and are already 
kind of activists in their own right. We have a lot of student activists here. And um, some are growing more through some struggle, maybe some internal conflict, maybe some ideas that are new to them, even some, some phrases, some words. And so um, even though it might not always be comfortable, one thing that I, um, I guess have, have held on to is that um, for students to experience that, that growth, sometimes a little bit of struggle is necessary and a little bit of discomfort can be okay and help us to grow. I think Great River should have more events like um, I race more often throughout the school year because one day talking about race isn't going to help anyone. Thank you. As a student, we were to have an opportunity to learn about other people's cultures and then as a staff member, I've ran like the POC safe room or gone on field trips during high race, which has been really fun to just get a chance to hang out and get to know people in not such an academic setting. Um, I think it was my senior year, we had a speaker who uh, talked about the like school to prison pipeline and the prison industrial content. Uh, complex. Uh, and I think that was just kind of, I don't know, it was very interesting to get it uh, explained in a very concise and understandable way uh, that I think everyone was able to access without like any prior knowledge. So. Oh my god, there's this satisfying feeling of when everything just like clicks together to form a, a, the event and it's like, whoa. Yeah. Well, I guess I really like the team ups. I, I guess the team ups. I just think it's like over the yeah, over the years. <laughs> um, last year we had two students talk about race, about the school, and it was really strong. And the like how they felt. Yeah. Just being in the school and the years before that they have done rap. I have to start with last year was our, our first student keynote and um, Isaiah Randall and Finetti Muhammad worked for months and months on their speeches and I was joyful to be a part of that process um, and also a local author and activist Sun Yun Shin helped them and it was uh, just a very um, very meaningful and powerful process to work both with an outside author, um, a beautiful poet in her own right, and these two incredibly brave students to get up and say um, things that were, to, to talk about how um, the dynamics of race had impacted their lives at school, um, and they weren't just speaking for themselves. I think that they, uh, they were really courageous and that was meaningful for me. There is an intersectionality mural that is still hanging in our school, and that was Nay Lee Yang um, conducted an arts workshop. And I just thought it was so cool that she had, I think over the course of the day, you know, 50 or so students contributed to this, and it's still hanging. And I think in some ways, uh, <laughs> the Roots and Unity Intersectionality Year, it's sort of symbolic of those themes, the way that the, the mural was co-created by so many students. Um, and it's, it's a joyful and colorful reminder of that.